Now, uh, tonight on the BBC, there's a special VJ Day programme hosted by Joanna Lumley, and it's going to obviously appeal to lots of the veterans, the old soldiers who were out in the Far East during the Second World War, uh, and uh, the Burma Star Organization uh, Association are very much involved. Uh, but it turns out that Mandalay, the Rudyard Kipling poem about a soldier who takes part in the war over there only to return home to find himself a reject from society back in Britain. It's a very evocative, important poem for a lot of the soldiers who are out there uh, and the musical version is too. Uh, it's been banned from the show. It's been axed uh, apparently because it feeds into colonial thought. It was going to be sung by the baritone Sir Willard White. Apparently, according to the stories in the papers, he objected to some of the content of this song. So it's it's gone. It's out. Uh, joining us now to discuss this is military historian uh, and for former British Army officer Mike Yardley. Hello, Mike. Hi, how are you? I'm very well. Uh, I don't think a lot of the old veterans from the campaign out in the Far East are going to be very happy about the axing of Mandalay from tonight's show. Well, I, th I think the BBC is becoming ridiculously PC now. The, this is the only example of this sort of thing. I mean, it, all of our history is being rewritten. You know, we see attacks on Churchill and others. I think we've got to be realistic. I mean, Britain has changed. We have, you know, a multicultural, call it what you will, society now. We used to be a pretty racist society. We used to have an empire. But we are now one of the most tolerant countries on earth. And I think a lot of people share my view on this. Perhaps I'm wrong. That the PC thing has gone too far and is actually damaging our history now. You know, we, we have to accept that, you know, things were different then. We had different values. But you can't trash all our history, which is what the BBC would seem to want to do. Moreover, they seem to push a PC agenda upon us relentlessly in their programming. And it, I mean, you know, it, it, it's something that a lot of people talk about. Now, I've talked about it with many friends, and I think it's wrong. And from a historian's point of view, yeah. I think they're actually changing his, and I think that's wrong as well because we're getting a, you know, kids are going to get completely the wrong idea of what things really used to be like, you know, when, for example, you introduce characters into stories that um, didn't exist because it suits the current yeah. PC narrative. Yeah. Now, members of the Burma Star Association have uh, expressed their dismay about this decision to cut Mandalay out. Uh, I think we should, ought to, as a nation and the BBC as an organisation, ought to show respect to our veteran soldiers who fought in that terribly uh, arduous campaign, heroes of the nation, who like this poem and like this song, they identify with it. Why are we disrespecting them by axing this song? The other thing that really concerns me is when you actually hear factually incorrect statements being made. I mean, it's suggested that somehow, you know, that the black and Indian um, troops who served in the Second World War who, who were cut out of history in some way. Well, that's just blatantly not the case. You know, anyone who's, who studies this era knows, in fact, that they made a tremendous contribution, which has always been valued. Mm. And to suggest that that hasn't been done is simply wrong. It's yeah. propaganda. And, yeah. and that disturbs me. Yeah, um, I... I mean, from the Burma Star Association pointed out that they were not consulted on this and that in 2015, at a similar uh, celebration of this anniversary, which would have been, what, 70 years then, a major part of the service on Horse Guards Parade was a reading of Mandalay by Charles Dance, the actor. Uh, so it used to be central to this equation. Suddenly the BBC uh, has decided uh, it feeds into to a kind of racist colonial mindset and it's out. Uh, that's not f fair to the veterans and bit, a bit ridiculous, don't you think? I, I think it is a bit ridiculous. However, I'm quite old. My memory goes back a long way. I was brought up by a lot of people who were routinely racist. But our values have changed. And I think we can all be very proud of the, the modern Britain that we live in Mm -hmm. And generally, our attitude of tolerance to people um, from other cultures and other races. I mean, this is one of the best places on the planet in that regard. 
And you would have thought the BBC were trying to suggest otherwise. If you, t- you, know, if you turn the channels over and you look at um, independent television, and you look at advertising, you also see there that there seems to be a deliberate effort now to present a picture of Britain that isn't actually a realistic one. You know, there seems to be a lot of adjustment. You see a lot of mixed race people in advertising, perhaps a lot more black people than actually are representative of the population generally. Why can't we take a grown up attitude to all this stuff? Say, yes, racism in the past was a bad thing. Say, yes, our Commonwealth troops came to our rescue in the war. They played a particular part. We've just been celebrating the end of the the war um, with Japan. They played a particular part um, in in that year, so particularly Indian troops. And can't we just move on and be grown up? Why, Why are there these hidden people in the BBC creating agendas and policies to re-educate us. I yeah. mean, this reminds me of Stalinist Russia. I mean, what, what is the purpose behind it? Do uh, we need to be re-educated? A last word about the actual veterans uh, who will be at tonight's show. Uh, this was a favourite marching song of theirs, and uh, it's a very special poem uh, in their hearts. Uh, what, uh, again, I'll come back to that question I asked you before. Doesn't the BBC realise that by axing this song, it's disrespecting the heroes of this nation? I I don't think they do. And more I don't think they care. I think their agenda, and I've been struggling to try and work it out, you know, from intellectually trying to work out what is going on with this extraordinary assault upon us at the moment to try and push all things to BC. And I know I'm not the only one who's noticed it. I mean, you, you have too, and thousands, if not millions of other people. But yeah. why is the BBC doing it? Why aren't they showing respect to our veterans in the way that they should? Yeah, well, it's probably in the same way that they're now beginning to embrace this concept that uh, uh, Winston Churchill wasn't the great hero of this nation. He was an old racist. Uh, that seems to be the new narrative that's gaining traction at the BBC. But we have to keep reminding that organisation that we're not going to put up with this for that much longer. It's just ridiculous. I totally agree. And, and human beings, you know, and human beings aren't perfect. I mean, Churchill was far from perfect, no. but he was a great wartime leader. And, you know, he should be honoured as such. If you deconstruct anyone's past, you can, you know, you can find stuff that was wrong with them. I mean, there's, we've had all, all the BLM demonstrations and all of it, but there was very little discussion of slavery actually in black Africa. Um, at that time, because it wasn't convenient to the political narrative that was being developed. And I can't help thinking, as we discuss all these matters, that there is some sort of political agenda behind it that goes beyond... I don't think there's any doubt of that, Mike. I don't think there's any doubt about that at all. Uh, We are being subjected to some sort of political agenda. Uh, Listen, thank you so much for your time. Great to talk to you. That was Mike Yardley, military historian and former British Army officer. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan. This is Talk Radio.